Hi, Dr. Hagmeyer here with the Naperville Institute for Neurometabolic Solutions. And if you're a woman who's going through the change, you've been put on hormone replacement therapy, or you just simply dread that time of the month because you fear the heavy uh, cramping and the heavy bleeding and the pelvic pain, uh, the depression and the migraines, then in your search for answers and in your, in your, in your quest for, for finding out what's the cause behind all of this, you may have come across a term that gets thrown around quite a bit on the internet and a lot of self-help hormone balancing books called estrogen dominance. And so in today's video, I wanna help you understand really what it is, some of the signs and symptoms of it, some of the dangers of it, and really why in certain cases it can be very, very damaging to the future health uh, if you continue taking these synthetic hormones like birth control pills and fertility hormones and HRT. I also wanna explain some of the missing key players when it comes to balancing, uh, balancing hormones, and it's these key players that are often forgotten about. So when we really talk about estrogen, realize that estrogen is not a single hormone. It's really a class of hormones. There are many different kinds of estrogens. There are human estrogens, there are animal estrogens, there are synthetic estrogens, there are phytoestrogens, and then of course there are xenoestrogens. Uh, phytoestrogens are obviously the estrogens that come from plants, and the xenoestrogens are the estrogens that are commonly found in plastics and other foreign chemicals that are finding their way into our ever increasing toxic world that we live in. Um, if you are having any kind of hormone imbalance, the hormone that often gets tested by your doctor typically includes an estrogen hormone called estradiol or E2. But I want you to realize that there are, there are other kinds of estrogen. There is E1 called estrone, there is E3 called estriol, and then there are the metabolites of estrogen, like 2, 4, and 16 hydroxyestrogen, that are also very important in understanding how they play a role in hormone imbalance. And the problem is, is that these hormones hardly ever get tested. Now, estrogen dominance is a term that was coined by Harvard physician Jonathan Lee. And what's important to know about estrogen dominance is that it really can occur in many different stages of a woman's life. It can happen to a woman in her teens who is uh, put on a birth control pill because of, let's say, an irregular cycle. It can happen uh, during a, a woman's life where she perhaps is having difficulty conceiving and so she undergoes a series of fertility shots. Uh, estrogen dominance can happen in women uh, who don't ovulate every month because of a possible um, underlying health problem related to polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS. So let's talk first about how this estrogen dominance really applies to women between the ages of 35 and 50, okay? Well, starting at around age 35 or 40, estrogen levels start to slowly decline, okay? Your body needs, it doesn't need, I should say, your body doesn't need as much estrogen as it did once upon a time, and so your body is in the early stages of winding down, okay? But what happens is, is with the drop of estrogen, what we often see is that there's a steeper drop in the progesterone levels. And it's this steeper drop in progesterone levels that really widens the gap between the falling or, or declining estrogen levels and the progesterone levels. And so these two hormones are opposing one another, and it's the big gap between the two that's really responsible for many of these different symptoms. Now, if you're a woman who actually has a menstrual cycle, uh, your estrogen levels are really not dropping off at the rate of your progesterone levels at the end of your cycle. And so this creates, again, a wide gap between the estrogen levels and the progesterone balance. So when we talk about estrogen dominance, it's really important to understand that it doesn't necessarily mean that you have a whole lot of estrogen. It just means that the relationship to progesterone um, is one that's favoring more estrogen to progesterone. So it's really a relative ratio of estrogen to progesterone, and that's really the key. Not that long ago, I did a video titled Why You May Feel Worse with Progesterone Cream. And so if you haven't watched that, I really encourage you to because what I see more often than not is a huge problem for a lot of women. And what I often see is, is just because of this, this condition, uh, because women uh, have estrogen dominance, many, many practicing physicians go right away to progesterone and progesterone uh, replacement. And so I'll talk about that here in just a few minutes. But here's the thing. There is no doubt that for some women, progesterone creams can be an absolute blessing, but it really needs to be used judiciously. And to be quite honest, there are many things a woman really should be doing naturally to kind of offset the curb of that. Now, I realize there are, there are many, many doctors out there who are just big proponents of going right into progesterone when they see this estrogen dominance. 
But that is not the first approach that I recommend. I, I used to do that, in, and I can tell you that what we do now is, is just much more effective, it's much safer, and it's much more efficient, um, which that is something I'll, I'll talk about in another video. But the point being here is that when working with hormone optimization, it's not, simple, it's not simply just looking at the progesterone levels in relationship to estrogen, and if those progesterone levels are low, just simply taking progesterone, okay? There are many different causes behind why progesterone levels are low, or why estrogen levels may be high, or why the estrogen levels are staying high. And it's these things that really need to be looked into and explored before diving into the land of hormone replacement. Realize that hormones are a family, and when we see one hormone off, there are typically multiple members of that family that are also off, okay? And this is really why I believe to truly assess female hormone levels, we really need to look not only at the estrogens and the progesterones, but we also need to look at things like the androgens, which are, are the male counter hormones. We also need to look at the metabolites of estrogen, meaning how estrogen is being broken down and really cleared through the body, okay? And that's where liver function and GI function plays a very big role. We also need to look at the thyroid hormones. We need to look at the adrenal hormones. Specifically, we need to look at cortisol and DHEA levels. But some of the other things that we also need to make sure that are, are in check are things like the blood sugar levels. We need to make sure uh, that we're not dealing with liver congestion. We need to make sure that we're not dealing with problems related to anemia. We also need to uh, realize that there's problems related to gastrointestinal function that could be playing a role there. So each of these areas are really, really major contributors to the health and the balance of a woman's cycle. In over 15 years of practice, I rarely see a woman uh, consult our practice having had all these hormones evaluated. And so the other thing I want you to really understand and something that I really wanna to stress today is that to any woman who has started working with a doctor for hormone balance or bioidentical hormone treatment is this. You need to get your hormones retested every 90 to 120 days. And this is so very important if you are taking any kind of compounded hormone um, or uh, progesterone or DHEA, or even thyroid hormones, okay? Very, very important because any of these, if they get out of, of uh, sync or if they get out of balance, you run the risk of many, many hormones getting converted into more undesirable hormones. And when that happens, this is also only gonna cause a further deterioration in hormone health and hormone balance. Um, the other thing is, is that when this happens, you may notice that one or more symptoms that were very similar to estrogen dominance start occurring, okay? So let me quickly review some symptoms of estrogen dominance. And these are gonna be things like weight gain. These are gonna be things like, especially around the, the middle of the, of, the, of the trunk. These are gonna be weight, uh, this is gonna be areas where weight gain occurs in, in the tricep area. You're gonna have, again, of course, fat gain in, in the hips and thighs. Um, you may experience fatigue. You might have tenderness uh, around uh, the breast tissue, okay, during that time of the month. You may have, uh, issues where the immune system flares up. And so if there's an existing autoimmune disorder, many women will note that their doctor has uncovered uh, perhaps an autoimmune thyroid issue as a result of this, okay? We also know breast cancer. We know that too much estrogen with unopposed progesterone can lead to breast and uterine cancer. We also know that signs of estrogen dominance are things like breast tenderness. And we also know that uh, estrogen dominance can lead to things like cold hands and feet which are the very same symptoms that we often see with a thyroid disorder, okay? Now, women with estrogen dominance will also have a decreased sex drive or uh, a decreased libido. They'll have difficulty with orgasm. They may have a, uh, quite a bit of muscle and joint pain and, and um, inflammation. They might have depression. They may have brain fog or foggy thinking. Many women will have hair loss. They'll have symptoms of low blood sugar and they may have actually an increase in blood clotting or even heavy periods. So I know I just rattled off a, a whole lot of symptoms, but these are symptoms I really want you just to be aware of, okay? Because again, um, when we look at these symptoms in context of the bigger picture, um, they can be very problematic. And if they're not addressed, your body's still trying to tell you that there's something wrong. So again, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope it gives you a better understanding of what estrogen dominance is, uh, why it's important that um, we just don't look at it as a deficiency of progesterone. I hope you have a better understanding and a better appreciation for really why you need to look at the bigger picture. You need to look at uh, sugar levels, why you need to look at liver function, why you need to look at uh, gastrointestinal function. 
And if you visit my website, drhagmeyer.com, you can request a free resource guide that I put together that goes into a whole lot more detail about the approach that we've developed when it comes to working with women and hormone imbalances. Of course, as, as always, if you found this video helpful, you know, I'd appreciate it if you share it. We want to get that word out to, to the women in the community that are just suffering with these, these problems and um, that there is a natural approach to, to going about correcting this. So until next time, take care.